Uh, welcome, Opinionated family, to another episode of Opinionated Podcast. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully, very, very well. good. Yo, good, do me good. a favor. Move What's to up, the, though? move to the your right a little bit, just to get, <laughs> and then move the mic. Because yeah, I wasn't sitting. It would bother me the whole episode. I'm so. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> listen, man. So listen, man. Today's episode is is basically we're talking about who's raising these boys and the men. I said demasculation. Well, My man Nico here's what it said. Feminizing men. And the reason we're doing this topic is like today I was talking to my daughter. It's talk to my daughter, some guy she's talking to. My daughter's 21 years old, by the way. Well, it's about to be 21. And she came to me and she said, Dad, I need my oil change and my car and XYZ. I said, and she's like, yeah, I'm like, why you get your fucking boyfriend to do it? Like, he always want to argue with me. He talks about, I got I to gotta make up his bed. I got to do X, Y, Z from, I don't even know if he know how to change the oil in the car. No, for, yeah. So I said, bring his ass here. He got you wanting to clean up behind him and take care of it, you know, take care of him as a, as a woman would do a man. Your car should be clean. Your oil change. If you don't know how to do it, I know how to do it. I got the tools to do it. Bring your ass here and come do this for somebody you're dating. Like just the other day, I showed my son how to change his oil so he knows how to do it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. These is is traits. I have my other son cut the grass today and we whack around the house. I took his mother never has to does do that. His mother never has to go outside, we whack or cut the grass. Hey, hey Nico, you want to hear something interesting? Always. You know who taught me how to change brakes? Your mother? Nope. Okay, because that would have been very interesting. That would have been crazy, right? No, nah, <laughs> this, this guy right here. Yes. Told me how I, to change brakes. My dad didn't do nice. it, but he told so, me how to change brakes. So these are things I like. These are things I do. Like we were talking about your office space and how you set everything up, and I'm pretty sure you learned that from somewhere. But like. It seems like it's a freaking fall off for now for these men, these or these boys that are coming up that's supposed to be men eventually. Like they have none of these skills. And I don't know who are teaching them, why they're not teaching them, and like why today's society is trying to say, oh, they men don't need to do that anymore. I think this should be an everybody trait. Please explain to me, y'all. Please. <laughs> why aren't fathers teaching it as simple because they don't know themselves? Because if you look, look at history, right, we, you know, the expression that says that hard men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men. So that, that that's actually based in science, but it is a hundred, it is about 80 to 120 years cycle. And if you look at the last hard men that we had were the guys that came back from the second world war. So that was 1945 was the end of the Second World War. So those are the parents of the baby boomers. Like my parents are in their, my mother's in her 60s, she's 65. So that means her, she's a baby boomer. So their parents, their fathers especially, were the last hard men. They knew how to do everything because they didn't have to. They lived in, they had to. They lived in a world where it, it wasn't like today. You didn't go to the grocery store and have everything just there available. They still go went to the butcher. They still needed to do something to that meat. They still needed to fix their own cars. They still needed to possess skills that we take for granted today. Unfortunately, the baby boomers, my parents, were mad at their fathers for not being emotionally available. Okay. Okay. And <sighs> let's talk about it today. Everything's about emotions now. And so you, you have baby boomers that had the best period in American history. And I'm talking about North American, like Canada and the U.S., where everything was prosper, like everything. Industries was everywhere. All the jobs were here in the U.S. Everything was made in the U.S. or North America. Nothing was made in China like today. We had the best economic time that North America has ever had. So everybody was working. Those people were working people. And they weren't necessarily there for their children because at the same time, they just came back from war, from the World War II. Do you think that you're okay when you were conscribed, when you were forced to go somewhere to fight and see your friends die? you think you're emotionally okay when you come back? Like you don't have to deal with some shit. And it wasn't like today, right? 
people did not did not have access to resources or did not have at least the 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 scientific knowledge that we have today in psychology and they decided to raise their children on a complete opposite instead of saying my parents taught us that they said what did we lack that's human nature we don't we take for granted what we've had and we always look for what we don't have we're not appreciative we're not grateful for what we have so this is exactly what happened those parents said well you know what my non-emotional available father i will never treat my son the same way so instead of of being hard on them instead of teaching them what a man needs to know and ex you know rites of passages were for that reason exactly right. to teach boys how to become men those are essentially dead we have none in north america and instead of concentrating on making men we concentrated on trying to be friends with our children we tried we concentrated on being emotionally available for them while forgetting that all the attributes that our fathers taught us that make us great men we take them for granted and we did not pass them on so you have people my age that were brought up by baby boomers to believe that our emotions are the most important thing on the planet we're raising kids but we by default my, my father wasn't there my father less I, i was 14 years old and he never looked back so who the fuck was supposed to teach me how to be become a man nobody did i had to learn that shit by myself this is has been a 26 year story that i'm still learning every day but at the same time i don't take the f i don't take it for granted i understand that if i look at my father when he was alive he did not possess the skill to teach it to me even if he would have wanted to unless he admitted to himself that he was the, that, that he was a problem that he did not possess the skill he was not a good man himself who abandoned his children as a man could you see yourself abandoning your children no matter what happens No. between your wife and you you can't that as a man you're supposed to take care of the family you're supposed to take care of your children but we're supposed to be selfless we're supposed to take care of our family first and foremost so i did not i'm not the only one ever look today they say that 30 to 40 percent of boys are raised without a father they're raised by single mothers right 30 to 40 percent that's that's messed up that's a lot that's one at least one out of three boys right now is raised yeah. without a without a father present And even if the father's there, like I said earlier, those skills were not passed down. You, you said yourself that yeah. your buddy taught you how to change fucking brakes instead of your father. That yes. proves my point, right? Yes. But that, that also <laughs> means it. But that also means it's not too late. It also means oh, that yeah. we possess the power to change it. Yeah, as, I like as long as we accept that we're the problem, this is always the first fucking step. Because I could make it. I could be a little victim the rest of my life and say, you know what? I'm not a good man because I didn't have a good father. Or I could simply say, you know what? My father was not a good person, was not there for me, but I will never do that to somebody else. So let's learn how, since I, I can't, I can blame everybody I want, but at the right. end of the day, nothing's going to change until I accept that I'm the problem. Accountability is, is 100%. The key, the key look word. at every single problem in society today. Every single one of them. It's somebody that said, not my problem when it was its fault, when it was his responsibility to take accountability. Look, I don't care what the problem is. Name it. You can track it down to a lack of responsibility. That's it. Absolutely. See, see me, I, like you said, you're talking about baby boomers. I was raised, like my father was here and there, but I was raised essentially by my grandfather. And my grandfather. Right there. Yeah. My right there. Yeah. My grandfather, every Saturday morning, Drake can probably say the same thing. Every Saturday morning, my grandfather would wake up. He would go out there and cut that grass. And way before he cut the grass, he had me and my brother pull every stick and twig we could find in the yard and pile it up and get out of his lawn. He'd rake, if the leaves <laughs> needed to be raked, we'd rake the leaves up. We'd drag a tarp across the street and drag that tarp across the street and empty them leaves. He cut that grass, and after he cut that grass, he'll make some lemonade, and we would sit there on the back porch. We would listen to music, <laughs> and we would just stare at the lawn that we just – my wife catches me doing that now. Like, if she'd see me cut the grass, I would just stay, sit out there and just look at my lawn, look at my yard. But this is something I was accustomed to doing every single Saturday, whether it was cutting the grass in the summertime or the fall, raking the leaves, making sure no sticks is in this yard, no trash is in this yard. 
Like my grandmother came when my grandmother came to this house. My grandmother kept the inside of the house immaculate. My grandfather kept the outside of the house immaculate. If that's anything, symmetry. yeah, yin and yang. I, yeah, so that's that's the mentality I have as a man. So when my boys, when it, because now I got a leaf blower, but before I had a leaf blower, my boys would come out there. I have a rake, and I'm raking, and I got a big ass yard. Drake can tell you. People look at me like, why? I mean, I have my leaves will sometimes be four feet high because I have all these trees, four feet high, about you and you're talking about 50 foot in front of my house, a 50 foot line of leaves, five feet high, four feet wide, just leaves. And this is something I raked all day. I woke up at nine o'clock in the morning and I wouldn't get done raking leaves like three o'clock in the afternoon, me and my sons. But it felt good after I got done. I felt the energy. I'm like, I I felt like I accomplished something that day. There's lessons there that 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 your grandfather taught you, and I had the same experience. There's lessons there that there's there's pride, you know. Number one, pride in your home, pride in your, you know the, the way your home looks. There's responsibility. There's I mean, it's a myriad of things. I'm not going to go down the list, but there's so many things that that was in, that was instilled in you and I um, that. You're you're not going to allow yourself to not pass that down to your kids because that's that's how you know how to live life. I mean, me, I started paying people to do my lawn, but I ain't got no kids, so <laughs> <laughs> I just ain't feel like you know doing it for four hours. But point being is that I know that it has to be done. I know that it has to be at least paid for or done by me. You know what I mean? Not my wife, and and that's the responsibility that I have to my family or my wife or however it goes. So that's, I think that's the thing that's missing. Now say just, just for, for argument's sake, I have a son or I have a couple sons and I don't allow them to do that. Now I'll take care of that. Oh no, I'll, I'm paying for, don't worry about it. Just, you know, wake up and play your game on the weekends and, and you don't have to do anything. Then, then it takes them down a whole different path. They're going to be waiting for somebody else to do it for them their whole life. That's going to be the way they live life is somebody else is going to do that for me. I'll just wait until somebody comes to save me. Somebody's going to come to save me and do my lawn or pay my bills or so on and so forth. So I think that's the the the, the path that a lot of kids have gone down. A lot that's, of young- a, that's a fucked up thing because my son, this is another thing. My son was like, Dad, I want, he wanted to go to a party. He wanted to go to Dave and Buster's. He said, Dad, I need $50. He's act, he asked his mother first. Mom, yeah, that's I don't cool. have, yeah, I don't have it. <laughs> and I overheard the conversation. So I said, oh, you need $50? I said, cool. Today I was supposed to cut my lawn and weed back today. I said, you want $50? This is how you can get your $50. You're going to wake up Sunday. I'm going to give you $50 today, but you're going to wake up Sunday morning. You're going to go outside. You're going to cut that grass, and you're going to weed whack, and you're going to do everything I was supposed to do today, and I'll give you a $50. But that's also teaching him to say, hey, with hard work, and putting some type of work in, the reward is the money I want to do the things I need to do. Instead of saying, hey, son, you need $50. I know I have it. Here, take the $50. Uh Neglect any kind of responsibility you're supposed to have. Go have fun. And that's how things works in life. It don't work like that. And that's the thing. This is the thing I see lacking today is like that right there. But But you're lucky because I wouldn't have got paid when I was younger. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) See, that's the thing. I just do it. <laughs> I, I, I was gonna, you know, I he, he got his responsibility in his house, but I want him to teach like look, listen, I mean, learn like, hey, you're not old enough to have a job, but I have a job for you that will pay. Mm-hmm. But the only you, you gotta do this job, and it ain't an easy job, but it'll pay. And with you getting paid, you'll be able to enjoy. You know, enjoy your money. That's just like me. I wake up. I wake up every day to go to work. I don't feel. Some days I feel sick. Some days I feel broken. Some days I feel tired. But I go. I remember a, 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 a guy I used to work with told me this. He's like, "Listen, he's he seen me. He seen me hungover." He said, "He said I'm glad you're here." He said, "You know the difference between a bum and a man." He said, "What?" I said, "What?" He said, "A bum would get drunk on drunk drunk on the weekend." and blame his hangover on the reason he can't come to work. A man will wake up after that hangover, shake it off, and get to work and get the job done. Done. I'm glad you're not. He said, I'm glad you're not a bum. You came to work. Don't ever be a bum. Not drink, but. Not drink, but. 
But you get what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're going, if you're going to party, if you're going to party hard on your days off, what you deserve as a man, show your ass up the next day from work, and let's get back to work. That's part of it. Yeah, yeah it's not even it's not even a thought, honestly, to me. Like you know, you call out here and there, but the truth is, it's always. You 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 always got to go to work. You always got to provide. That's just something I don't know where it came from with me, but that's just it's work ethic, I guess. I knew like okay, no matter what, unless I am bent over, broken on the floor, I gotta go to work because somebody gotta pay these bills. But I gotta but go to work. But that's the thing that's lacking today. I'll see, see these young men coming to work. They don't want to work. They are looking for excuses. I don't mean I want to work. No, I'm saying no. They looking for. The easy way out or or a scheme or hey bro you have a great paying job show the fuck up earn your money where is this coming like how are you supposed to raise a family how are you supposed to take care of anybody you can't even you can't even get your ass up here to come to work today yeah, yeah. Oh, why do you think that is because listen man is like I see some women talk like women that raise their boys and they be like, oh, I don't want to work them too hard. And it's OK. I got it. He can just sit there. I'll take. Oh, I've never heard that. I'm sorry. No, bro. I heard that. I heard that. I heard somebody post one time. Who's going to cut my grass? I know for a fact you got boys. Yo. Yeah, that's crazy. Get what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, Get your ass out there and cut that. Why is your mother cutting their grass? Why is I remember when I remember showing I remember getting off of work show coming to my mom's house to come visit her and she's outside starting the lawnmower up. I grabbed the lawnmower from her. What are you doing? I cut my grass. I said, Mom, why you ain't called? Why well, I know you get off of work and you're tired and you but I said, All right, mom, go in the house. Fresh off of work, dog. Work boost still on everything. I just came to see my mom say what's up. Just did like 12 hours at work, knocked the fucking lawn out, sat in there and chat to my mom. I said, Mom, you got grandsons. Not only you got son, you got grandsons. Yo, go to my house, pick one of them fucking boys up, go do this. Why is my mother doing this? I'm going to tell you. I don't know who. Listen, I would have got the fuck. I would have got the, the crap knocked out of my, my brain. If my mom, if as a kid, if my mom is ever outside doing any type of or if like the trash if she's taking the trash out even my wife sometimes my wife you know all of, okay we're all we're all married here like i know nico you're married kev you're close to being married either way you, you might as well be married yeah sometimes our our girls will they'll say can you take the trash out you might have just got finished doing something yo give me a second because when they want to take the trash out they want you to take the trash out right then and there you know what i'm saying which is fine but you might take a couple extra minutes my wife would do this one thing where she'll start ga gathering it up like she about to take it out because she knows what's that going to make me do? Jump up. I'm going to jump up and take the trash from her. Yo, come on, man. So my point is any boy man in my family that mom is there doing that kind of work and you sitting on your butt, I'm going to stop them from doing whatever they're doing. My mom, my aunt, whoever. Go grab one of them little boys up here. Oh, you don't know how to do it? Let me show you literally right now. Now this is your job. That's just the role. That's the role that it's supposed to be because I could never get away with that. So even to this day, my aunt's carrying groceries into their home and I'm there just visiting. Don't matter what I just, like. I might have just got off or something like that. I'm grabbing all the groceries. Now I got you. Go ahead. Like, it, you know what I mean? It's certain things that as a man, you don't let. I ain't going to say you don't let, but you don't, you know, you, you step in for because that's your job. You know what I mean? It, but like Nico was talking about earlier, today's society is letting that, let these motherfuckers drop. I understand we got to be there as men emotional for our kids because it's some shit that's we lost to me. It's some shit pent up in me in some shit, some ways I wish my father talked differently to me that probably could help me out. But I'm appreciative Mm -hmm. Of some of the stuff, of some of the hard lessons I had to learn from this man, and may, may not what my father may have told me may have not come out in the best way or been said the best way. But damn it, I think it needed to be said. You get what I'm saying? Okay. 
prime example about my father. When I was younger, oh, I hated fighting. And somebody, an older kid, he was older than me and he older than my brother, picked on my little brother. I'm the oldest. This kid, maybe two, I think maybe two or three years older than me. And I got scared and I ran to the house. And I've hid in the house and my father caught me hiding in the house from this boy that just picked on my brother and me. My dad made me go outside. He said, you got two choices. Either you whip his ass or I'm going to whip your ass. Those are the only, he said, that's the only two options you got. I knew I had no shot in hell of probably beating this kid. I went out there and fought, fought to the end. I mean, just fought to the end, to the point where, like, my aunt came and saved me. And I never forget it. My aunt came and saved me and never forget it. My aunt said, well, you got these boys fighting. And I literally, like, went back and just was, like, out of breath, hurt from getting punched and, and fighting him and was just looking up at the sky, breathing all hard. Don't you know the next day that kid became my best friend? The lesson my dad was trying to teach me was like, look, yeah, you might not want to fight or you might, but you got to stand up, son, and they'll give you the respect that you deserve. But if you come into this house cowering as a man, he's going to pick on you every single day he sees you. Yeah. I got that lesson a little old. as I got older. I was just mad. Like, my dad just forced me outside, knowing this kid's bigger than me, knowing this kid's stronger than me. I got no chance of winning this fight. But he stood there and made me fight him. Yeah. And, yeah. You know? So let me let me let me let me ask y'all a question. I'm gonna move this conversation forward. Yeah. I know the answer. Well, my answer, but in what ways is society now feminizing uh these young men or trying to feminize or 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 at least I don't know, scare the masculinity out of the uh <laughs> out of the masses. I'll let you go, Nick. Go ahead. <laughs> Years? You know, it comes down to this. Do you believe, you know, do you believe that there is something that's conspiring? That, that's the first question, right? Yes. Is there something conspiring? Is there something bigger, a bigger force out there that is trying to make us weak? Uh, I, I believe hard. What's I the believe first so. line of defense? The men. Take it back to anything. What's the first line of defense to the, the men? The men. So we, what's we the first would... line of defense for any country, for any civilization? What is the first line of defense? It'd be, it'd I'm gonna say they're men, but it'd be, it'd be... Well, you, you, you know, you know, um, and and I don't know if I heard you or That's maybe I always heard... what it comes down to. Look at it. It's always strong man that protects. So what is the first thing you can do if you're trying to weaken a certain society? You weaken their men first. Get rid of yeah. Yeah. Get rid of get rid of the men. As much as you can. I think I think we might be I think we're coming in late. Can you hear us? Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I, let, I, let, 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 hold on one sec. Because I don't know if he's, I don't know if I heard it from Nico before or if I heard it from a guy named Bedros Koulian, um, who I really like his content. He, he's a guy that a lot of people uh, kind of mess with. Like a, he started Fit Body Boot Camp, and uh, we'll see, we'll see if we can get Nico back. He started Fit Body Boot Camp, and he said the same thing. He says, "Yo, there's a war. You can't, you can't see it, but there is a war on our nation's masculinity. There is." And I do believe it. And it's TikTok. It's 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 all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's TikTok. It's all of that kind of I want to explain some of the ways that it can be weakening us. Like uh, as far as our 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 man, we're about to get into some deep water. No, go ahead, bro. Well, you're gonna swim with me, buddy. Um I'm I'm gonna go there with you. But let's go, let's go as do you think Do you think that LGTBQ plus community, not community, because I want to be very clear, because I don't I don't think it's the members of. I think it's the advocates or people who say they're advocates of. So let me be very clear. You're saying people in support. 
Who, no, no. Oh, quote, quote unquote. Poor. Yeah. Quote unquote support, not actual. Yeah. Like me and you support the community because we have friends that we and love, family, and family right. that are important and dear to us. It's like be you, but yeah. then you got people who say I'm in support, and they just go. I was thinking about that the other day. Give it to me. I was just thinking about that the other day. I'm like, go crazy on them. You talk to people in that community about that. They love the outpour and support that they're giving, but sometimes they look at it like, hey, you guys are doing way too much. This person referred to him as a him and, him and her as a her. I don't, don't see a problem in that. But when this person addresses me, they always, even though I make I make the transition, they address me as the person they want me to see him as. Mm -hmm. Why are you going overboard attacking this person? Because correct, they don't they're they're using pronouns that's been around as old as time. Right. I they always every time they see me, they refer to me who's who I want to be referred to. They look at me in that light. They treat me though as though as I'm in that light. Why are you going so overboard trying to attack these people? And that's what they do. They, it's the supporters. Yeah. And there you go. Supporters. Let's do that. So, because Quotation mark supporters. Yeah. Let me put that in there for the audio. We are using quotation mark. Quotation yes. mark supporters. Supporters. Because I don't necessarily think it's people who actually support. Because if you support, you're at the rallies, you're, you're fighting for actual rights. Yo, I'm with it because I understand. Like we, you know what I mean? I understand. We're black. We're right, black. exactly. But it's the people who sit online and attack people all day. They don't have anything better to do. It's just about, hey, this is what I think. So I'm gonna go as hard as I can on this person who didn't mean any harm. Who also, let's let's put this out there too, has a right to their opinion. Let me bring something up. I know we ain't got Nico. I don't know if he's coming back. Um so Neo, the singer, the R&B singer Neo said something the other day and they, and they killed him for it. Of course, my dog is an asshole. They killed him for it, right? I'm, I might have to mute up. It's cool. Say, I, I bring another one up while you mute up, mute up. Just hilarious. Recently brought up something about what's the idea of a, of a real woman. And they annihilated her on online. L let me be clear, because we're talking about, you know, demasculating men. The word woman and men is just some term that somebody brought up to describe physically seeing through your eyes a sex. So you can identify with it. It's no different than identify we, with us. We did it. We said this before. We said this yeah, before. but I'm saying but that's that's it. Why are you kill? She's saying that's a woman. Yeah. It's okay. You can identify as a woman. And every time I see you, I will identify you as a woman. Okay? Yeah. But visually, in my eyes and what my brain is telling me, that that's me. That's my household. This is how I raised my household. This is how I raised the boys in my house to think. This is my domain. You can't come in with your outside sources and tell me to do this to my sons. You get what I'm right. saying? Right. Now, if my son comes to me and says, hey, dad, I am, I'm more in touch with, I think I'm more of a woman. That's my son. I love my son. I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. That's what you feel you, that, that you are? Cool. Even though you was raised up in my house and I, my household was, had a, a, a heterosexual theme going around my household, you still felt as though Mm -hmm. that you're a homosexual i have to respect said, that no 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 there is what? a difference i do have to correct you there he said what? you said that he feels like a woman if he uh, would feel like a woman because that doesn't necessarily mean so that oh ahead. well i don't know okay well I'm, that that uh, that i'm yeah. just putting in there just in uh, case just in case but i'm saying you was raised up raised in a heterosexual household but you i get you i get, get you. what i'm saying yeah i can't be mad at you it ain't like, and I'm not gonna force my shit on you. That's how you feel, son. That's how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not gonna change how I do things around here, but I will respect you in my house. In the process. In the process. Yeah. I will always respect you. Just like anybody else that belongs to that community, I respect them. 
Yeah. Respect is the key word. Yes. But the so quote unquote supporters, it's so hard trying to push this on to young boys and young men that they can't make up this, their mind for themselves. I wasn't pushing my heterosexual thing. I just, this is my household. This is how my house is raised. They, they are around it. They, they see this. Yeah. I refer to their mamas. That's my woman. I'm her mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. You're a boy. That's a girl. That's all the terminology you heard going in my household. That's the yeah. terminology. I'm not saying, hey, you got it. That's my non-binary. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying none of that shit. <laughs> but that's what they want you to do. You got to say that. You got to give a kid a choice. How am I giving a kid a fucking cho- I, The kid has a choice. The so kid me- grows up and be what he wants. You have a choice. Let me, let me, let me be very clear with what I think the issue is. And I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there. And I think people are going to understand once I put it out there, I think it's meet the media. There's so much media that we also, and I'm, I mean, on the news, which I don't watch. I mean, on your phone, it's literally hurled at you. Any type of media is hurled at you all day, all day long, whoever you are, unless you are a monk and you aren't on your phone. And you aren't like taking in that kind of stuff, which God bless you if you do. I think what it is, is it's so many people talking about it, right? Because we, okay, you might have one person who's like, well, no, I want to be called a woman because I transitioned. Okay, you're called a woman now. But it's more about, oh, this person said that they're not, their kids, which is in their houses, their fucking business, their kids they're not going to let them choose if they want to be a woman at nine years old, which is something with something to the like of what Neo said. What he said, that's like him saying, yo, I'm not going to let my kid play football. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to let my kid play football uh, at nine years old. Might get some brain damage, might get something wrong with him. I don't want them to do that. It's his household. Yeah. He, that's his, in, in his, um, what do you call it? His girlfriend or baby, whatever it is. That's it. That's the case. That is right. So the story doesn't become about rights anymore. It becomes about how we're going to shame him, and he should apologize and apologize to who? One of y'all niggas? What? Fuck y'all niggas! Y'all don't live in his motherfucking house to tell him how he should live. It's all about public perception. So I feel like the problem is the media's influence in everyone's life. Because the people who are quote unquote supporters are just random faceless people on the internet telling you their opinion. That's really and, all it is. And think about that situation. Neo said he's not going to let his nine year old do that. Dwayne Wade let his nine year old, I guess he was nine at the time. I don't know how old she is now. She but is. Definitely but, she. But she. But you get what I'm saying? Those are two different households. Mm-hmm. Yes. Those are two. BT was all in support. Two different households. Yep. At the end of the day, yo, I can't throw my nine-year-old to the fucking wolves and say, go fend for yourself. Correct. While you in my house, there are, are rules. When you become an adult or you feel as though you're that way, it's cool. Listen, son, you, you feel as though you, you, you're you trapped in the man. You're, listen. Right now, you're not. I'm not allowing you to dress like that. But I'm not going to tell you how to feel. I'm not going to force to say you got to have a girlfriend, right? Or right, or you got to toughen up and be a real man. Da, 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 da. Yo, I'm going to explain my situation how I feel about you. Going to explain your situation. We're going to sit there and have a conversation, mm-hmm. and we have conversations until you're an adult. And when you make that transition as an adult, and you doing your own thing. When you come to me and say, Pops, this is how I want you to see me now. Yeah. It's like, it's like it's cool. I have to recognize this. I love you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're my kid. You came from me. You're my kid. Mm-hmm. I respect everything you do in life. I love you. I, and this is the thing. Your sex life or your personal life doesn't have nothing to do with our relationship. Mm-hmm. As father and as son, daughter, or just kid. Let's just put that. Or kid. Father and kid. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That doesn't have no bearing on the shit. Your personal life and your sex life and your love life has nothing to do on that right, that relationship right there. Right. 
And I don't, and that's the thing. The government and social media, mind your fucking business. Yeah. Y'all ain't fucking going to Neo's house and paying no mortgage at Neo's house. You ain't paying no bills. You ain't putting no food in this crib. You ain't busting your ass to keep you this kid lifestyle the you same. Ain't make, you ain't making no slaps. Nothing. You nothing. ain't doing that. You ain't disciplining this kid. You ain't incur- you ain't doing nothing for this kid. Like you will never. Neo would fucking for his kid. I'm pretty sure Neo will run into a burning building and risk his life and losing his life to go save his kid. You will sit there on the person on the internet and call the fire department. Mm-hmm. Sit on the outside where he's safe. Oh, he should have ran. He should have ran faster for his kids. Exactly. You can't make I'm, people happy, man. I'm pretty sure Neil would jump in front of a fucking lion and fight a lion just for his kids to get away safely. Well, uh, he should have bought another lion to fight that lion. You get what I'm saying? You, you, you on the internet won't do that. No. So how this person raises his kid? That's because that motherfucker loves his kid unconditionally, mm-hmm. and he got rules and guidelines in this house. That's his house that he worked for. He sang his ass off for that. He danced and he fucking honed his talent. To do whatever the fuck he, long as he ain't molesting no kids, which I think would be wrong, or torturing no kids, where I would speak of thinking be wrong, or murdering no kids, I would think would be Hey, man. Whatever you do is your business in your house. What you do is your business in your house. And that's the shit I hate about, like, I'm going to push a conversation further along about media and, and TikTok and pushing shit on kids. Like, it's this thing they, like, I see a lot of videos of a young boys arguing with a female and just hauling off and teeing off on their head. Mm-hmm. And young boys laughing at this shit like it's funny. Mm-hmm. Bro, let me understand. Let me break something down to y'all. I'm a father of two daughters. I don't put my hands on nobody's daughter. I don't put no hands. I don't. Because it's two things that's going to result in that. Either somebody going to wind up killing me, or I'm going to catch them slipping, I'm going to kill them. Either I'm either going to be sitting in jail or the ground. Mm -hmm. Y'all young boys don't know the consequences because it it ain't a lot of fathers around these daughters' lives. If you was ever put your hands on my daughter in a video service, I don't care if you're 50 or you're 4. I am going going to uppercut you to fucking heaven. We're all coming. Exactly. That's how that is. Yeah. So why is it that like that's not fucking cool? And where are the moms and the father of these little boys who think it's just cool to just tee off on the female because they argue with them? Listen, I don't need listen. Some people say, what about they hit them? They slap. Listen, me personally, how I was raised, don't put your hand on female. Grab them up, control them, get away from them. That's how I was taught. You know what I'm saying? If all else fails, yeah. It's like one of those. If you ain't near them, there's no Yes, if all else fails, you might have oh. to grab them up, but don't yeah. start going crazy hitting them like they men. Or walk away. Like right, you was female. Oh no, nobody walks away. That's that's why young men are getting killed too. No walking away is just but I, I'm, I'm yeah, we're gonna tap into that after this one. Because you shouldn't be beating no females like that, no. dog. They are you shouldn't be hauling off hitting no female like that's another dude. Mm-hmm. But that's all across social media. You just and then see, go shoot a dude. Then go shoot a dude because you can't fight. Like just yesterday, they told me the amusement park around here got shot up yesterday. Uh, Clemson, Clemson Park, Clemson park just, got shot up. Had a shootout, and I'm pretty sure it was between two guys arguing, and they can't throw hands, so they automatically pull a gun and use it. That's why I don't argue with these younger, this younger generation today. They can't fight. It wasn't nobody out there telling you to go out. Another man telling you go out there and fight to live another day and earn your respect. I think it all comes down to rules, man. And and I hate I hate that we do this old head shit, but that's who we are. Shout out to Melly Mel. Um, <laughs> We'll talk about that another day. Belly Bell, that shit was trash. Um, <laughs> that shit was ass. Oh, your friends do not fuck with you. But um, so still I, a legend, Melly you know, Mel. Still a legend. Yo, the pioneer, one of the pioneers. But you should have kept that shit in your brain. Anyway, <laughs> when I when I when I think about life today, 
the one thing I feel like is the rules that were put in place that are unspoken are eroding. Um, The way our way of life is eroding, which in some cases can be good with the rise of technology, which is, you know, argument there, uh, but in a lot of ways could be bad. And I feel like I've said this before, but there was a unspoken rule. I'll say what everybody else says. Uh, Men with guns, because I know my, my little brother and them friend, I don't know the little I don't know the guy, but he got killed the other day playing basketball mm. and for what i know he wasn't a street dude or none he was just playing basketball somewhere and they aired out the playground and two people got killed two people got hurt mm. you know what i'm saying gilly son four people four, aired out the whole joint gilly son got killed other people got hurt i just think that how cavalier these kids are with guns um and we'll we'll go back to like the violence and stuff too i think how how the cavalier these kids are with guns is probably one of the number one problems. And music can be attributed to that. Uh, media as well, not social media. Media is attributed to that because sliding on somebody is now a a like it's a it's in conversation. Like it's a thing that's normal. Like I'm about to slide on that nigga. What does that mean? Yeah, I'm about to I'm about to go I'm about to go air that shit out. Why? I don't fuck with him. You sound like a bitch. Like, you sound like a bitch. What do you mean? You don't fuck with him. Go talk to him man to man. Nah, I'm just going to air the shit out. Now somebody, mom get killed or or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's these kids that the rules are gone. It's, it's, they're killing people when they're with their girlfriends. They're killing people when they're with their kids. They, kill, they just airing shit out and not, not even looking. Just do, 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 do. Gone. And when it comes to the violence part with the, it's I just, I, I think, yeah, it's like they're overloaded with violence every day coming from everywhere. The one thing I didn't like, man, I, I, I'm, I'm being long winded, but I'll land. The one thing I didn't like. Yes. Yes. It was amazing to see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to anybody that's listening that might not understand where this is coming from. But when all the black people jumped into that fight, <laughs> it was amazing because y'all don't understand how many times we see it go the other way. I'm sorry. Whenever I see motherfuckers in the street, unless the black dude is completely wrong, I love to see us whip y'all ass. <laughs> <You're horrible. laughs> I love to see that shit. Because y'all been fucking... Listen, not y'all. Your ancestors. How do you land this shit? For ye- Hold on. <laughs> fucking us over for years. So when we see that, we like, score one for the good guys. We saw something happening. Y'all tried to pop fly, and we came there and mashed on y'all shit like we could <laughs> instead of us. I say all that to say, the one thing I didn't like is all week long after that, it wasn't just me seeing that fight. It was now let's post every fight. Now let's post every fight. Ha ha ha. It's all funny. Every fight. Nah. Because now the, what do you think the kids is doing? Soaking all that in? Now I'm going to just pop off on anybody because that's all I see. I could just throw my hands with a teacher. I could throw my hands with a girl. I could throw my hands with a guy. Whoever I see and I want to put my hands on, I'm going to just put my hands on them. And 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 that's and that's the thing. Like you talk about sliding earlier. My I grew up. We grew up in it. We we grew up in the nineties, two thousands, where our music was popping. Yeah, our v- music was <laughs> was violent. Our music was violent as fuck. I'm not even gonna lie. It was it was violent. But we didn't have all the fucking social media every day pumping this shit in our brain. We didn't have our rappers thinking it was okay to just shoot a bunch of random people or then get on social media and brag about how they shot up a bunch of people. It, it wasn't there. It was just, it was just, it was contained to the song. It was just contained to the song and it was it. That was it. That's where it sat at. It sat in that song. That violence sat in that song. And you knew it was a song. You knew just like a movie, it wasn't real. Well, you see somebody sing a song and then go on social media and then brag about the person they killed and then you come to find out this person really died 
that you was rapping about in your song, it's like these kids are like, oh, man, he really slid on his ops. You think about that shit, Drake. Think about the music back there. I was just, I'm going to bring you back because you pulled away. Our music, I was saying, bro, our music was violent back in the day, but it stayed in the song. Okay? It stayed right. It was contained in the song. That was it. You know what I mean? You really didn't see it too much in the media, nothing, nothing. But now it's like these kids now make a rap song about killing somebody. Then they go on social media. Then you find out the person, they they really did kill this person. And then next thing you know, they're all over. Like, they got this big trial. They kill somebody. And then they smiling in jail. Like, yeah, we did. We Like, these kids think, oh, I can go out, kill somebody. Going to take a couple months to find me. Brag about on social media. And then go have fun in prison. Like, niggas is making videos of, like, they um, in prison, like, having a good time. When in prison is crazy. <laughs> no, you... But this is what they pump into our kids. It's like, yo, it's cool to be here. They got pictures of, of, of rappers who's in prison. They all smiling, like having a good time. And, and, and there's a good caption on top. It's a fun caption. And these kids are seeing like, oh, wow, they smiling, they cheesing. There's a, the caption is a happy caption on top. Oh, yeah, I can go do time in there. It's not like that. It's not like that. Everything is not like that. Y'all going out here with these guns and being, yo, you go to prison. It's not like that. They are just, they're eroding everything, man. Everything when they come, like, I hate to see with these 20-year-olds, when they turn 30 and 40, of what shape where we living in this country we living in is going to be in. It's going to be left. Yes, but it's going to be bad. Not um, o- but think about it. not only this, bro. Yeah. Y'all niggas not thinking. Y'all niggas is about to set. Y'all, I can see y'all black people in the next 50 to 60 years being back in slavery again. That's just me speaking on black people. Like bro, tell me I'm what am I wilding? Prison was set up as modern day slavery. No, no, yeah, I agree. Yeah. The, the track that these kids is on. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I can see what you mean. And and then guess exactly what Nico was saying. Now you now y'all gotta understand that you don't think the other countries see that and and wanna and wanna invade niggas ain't been invaded in a while, right? Y'all think it's impossible. What better way to do it? Hey, let me put push violence into the neighborhoods. Let me get y'all, you know, don't take this wrong, identifying as whatever y'all want to identify, and our armies who's been raised since birth to fucking eat glass. Sliding right in there, and yeah, this is our country now. What y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna y'all gonna vogue us to death? Y'all yeah. gonna like you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all gonna be y'all slide y'all, on us? They yeah, never, you know, never hit nothing. Your sliders are in jail or dead. Y'all did a good job in making sure of that. They're dead or in jail. So now you got the other people who just you know what I mean like you're gonna have to fight us with half your people. So the point being is that there is an agenda. I don't know who it who it's by, and I don't know what it's for. But there is an agenda, and I think there's many agendas at play. There's agenda agenda to feminize. You know what I mean? It's all in our, you know, it's 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 all in the shows because that's all we watch. Uh, it's in the shows. It's in you know, it's in our programming. And there's agendas to make the other part, the other people, violent. That's why you get shown all the violence. And let me ask you a question. Girl, show a titty on uh, Facebook. Show a titty on Facebook. Oh. They ain't gonna last. It's, you're gonna be blocked. You're gonna be whatever it is. Show a nigga getting killed on Facebook or or a motherfucker fighting. That shit lives on Facebook for forever. It's a reason why that's the case. Yeah, I, I just got banned for sh- showing a chicken laundry. Show your dick, bro. No, I show <laughs> my chicken. Here doing. <laughs> <What's> the, <laughs> it's a singer. She, like I like somebody was talking about her, and I showed the picture. Is a I forgot her name. Uh, damn, what's her name? Shakira. Now Bobby or some shit. Um, the not the podcast girl, right? Nah, the, she's a she's a white girl, but she doesn't. Bobby, I, oh, what the fuck? I can't think of her name. But yeah, she maybe something. She was thick as hell, and niggas was like, "Man, she she ugly or something." And I showed a picture of her in the laundry. And niggas switched it up like quick, like, "Oh, okay." Facebook tried to ban me. I said for a lingerie picture, like she's fully clothed. I mean. Besides her being in lingerie, which I thought was hilarious, she's closing. Like, Duh. what is it? What's the deal? But y'all got motherfuckers on here every day showing 
motherfuckers getting stabbed up in prison and 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 and, and shot at and and I clear seen the video clear day. I seen the video dude post a video of somebody getting rolled up, shot him dead, put rounds in him. This is Facebook. Oh yeah, I know. They didn't get pulled. Nope. It's you can find it and you will always be able to find it on most of social media platforms. But that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, so we, and we'll wrap this up. We've been talking for years about regular television programming, right? Mm-hmm. They got smarter. Y'all think that they took Mark, Mark and them to, um, to court and all that. And they ain't got no, no hands in these social media platforms. Are you serious? They ain't going to let you know they got hands in it, bro. We're going to use this to program you. We could just program you from the TV before people gather around the TV, used to gather around the TV at night to watch their favorite shows. All right, cool. Now we could just program you from right here. You got that on all day long. Program, program, program. Violence, violence, violence. Ass shaking, ass shaking, ass shaking. It's All of it is designed to keep you glued, and control you, and desensitized. And 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 put you where they want you to go. My my wife um lately she's been finding Christian rappers, right? You could listen what you want to listen to. She turned on some of this music. I'm like, that sound like that sound like Travis Scott. Yeah, yeah that sound like that sound like Chris Brown, like that type of music. I'm like, it's just as good. Why the hell are we like it, it? And it's like, yo, you have a choice. And then once, yo, once she showed me, all of a sudden my feed start feeding me that, yeah. feeding me that. I'm finding new ones and new ones, and I'm like, the algorithm, man, the algorithm yeah. will get you. Whether would you can go positive, you can go negative, the algorithm yeah. will get you. It, it's designed to keep. It's designed to block you off from the world. Think about it. We were so we got so much done when when it was just right when people just had radios and maybe the TV started coming out. Look how much technology and infrastructure advanced. You know what I'm saying? Between nice building up, yeah. Think about the building of new roads, dams, uh, buildings, cities, and people having trades and really people being skilled and everything like that. Mm-hmm. To now is like where every you got everything in your phone. Like I said, kids can't even change tires. Uh, they won't even look it up on YouTube. That's how lazy they are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they can't tell. They can't tell you how to work certain like certain simple equipment. Hey, I got two. I like I tell my son. Listen, I got uh, two different gas out there. They're marked. Make sure that this gas is regular gas. This gas has a gas a mixture of oil and gas. Oil, yeah. Okay. Like Wee whacker. Yeah. yeah. Put the regular gas. See, I know that. You get what I'm saying? And it's marked clearly on the shit. I will catch them trying to put the regular gas in the weed whacker that gets the oil mix. Like, what did I, I tell work? you? But why are you not paying attention? They like this as they're trying to pour the gas. Put the fucking phone down. We ain't even had no Walkmans with us when we had to cut grass. Are you kidding yeah. me? Put the fucking phone down. You see what you're doing? That's what I got to tell. I got to tell my kids that nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yo, put the fucking phone down. What, what are you doing? Look what you're doing. Oh, I didn't realize it. I, duh. F- yeah, you got a phone in your hand. Well, you, it's the same shit. You're just scrolling up and up down TikTok for 20 second videos of the same shit. Every- so let me let me ask you, because <laughs> I, I, I see where you was going with that. Just kills in me. 30 years, where do you think society? Oh will my be? gosh, these motherfuckers won't, Get, they won't be think able about to, it and and and, and I'm be real. It. I'm gonna be think real. They won't be able to drive a car. Uber will run everything. There will be certain skilled people who will be getting paid a lot of money to drive cars around. It's already happening now. Uber will run everything. Certain jobs like like McDonald's and shit like that will start to become automated. It's, a, oh, it's already it's already it's getting there. It's a long it's a it's a it's a uh, a, a McDonald's in Longside that used to be twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. You ride past that, it's always open. After the pandemic, and when these younger kids start taking over, that should be open some nights. Some nights it be closed. Sometimes it's open. Sometimes it's closed. Mm-hmm. You can't. You get what I'm saying? The kids, the, the, the workforce is going to shrink. 
I don't know where these kids are going to make money from. Program, uh, but um, not even program because a lot of them now is like they 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 encourage nothing. They encourage these camps to get set up in like California. I heard California is bad. They encourage these camps. Leave these people. They got nowhere to go. They got these ain't like before. Homeless people might be crazy or strung out on drugs. These are totally total capable human beings of having a job of getting a job and provide for themselves. They don't want to. You're going to see homelessness go up on a rise. People not driving. Most of the jobs is going to be automated. Eventually the government is going to, uh, yo, eventually the government is going to tell you how to live your life and you might not even know it. You think it, oh, I go have control. It's going to be through your phone. I said eventually. <laughs> it might be there. It's hey, already- hey, this is social media. I'll post something. Hey, 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 watch, watch the next election. You, yeah. you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. They yeah. already telling you how to live your life. It's just idiots don't, they don't understand. They don't question. They weren't raised to question. I question everything and I don't know why I do it. I just do it. Yeah. And, and just to further what you were saying about McDonald's and them and why I agree with you and why all of those types of things are going to be uh, automated. Um, listen, y'all young kids, because we got a lot of young kids in Florida that um, that work at McDonald's. And I'm sorry, I don't know who raised y'all. There is no way in the world that I should walk up to the counter, be waiting, looking for somebody, then somebody come up and be like, which what, what you want? Don't give eye contact. Yeah. All right. Ready to pay. Nigga just point at the, the screen where I gotta tap my card, looking somewhere else. That's what nigga did to me uh, a couple of weeks ago. Just yeah. don't say thank you, don't say nothing. Hey, guess what? When they bring them screens in there, I'll happily use them because y'all niggas is pieces of shit. And well, I don't want to buy anything from y'all. And I wish I don't go to fast food restaurants because I don't want to give y'all niggas my money. Yeah, I just did that the other day. We walked into McDonald's, same thing. There's a screen there, and there's people working. Nobody at the front. Ca- Remember back in the day, you walk in the store, motherfucker waiting at that you? cash. Can I help you? We're yep. Waiting at that cash register. Nobody Pride. at the cash register, no nothing. I said, babe, don't even go there. Touch that screen. What are your mm-hmm. food over here? Yeah, shit, and, shit. and they doing it. They don't even realize they doing it to themselves. Yeah, shit pops up, we pay. What you think going to happen? McDonald's going to say, we don't need cashiers no more. Mm-hmm. It's nice coming. Thing. 30 years down the line, Dre, when hopefully I'll be walking out the door, Five coming to, to meet Jesus. Five to ten. Yeah, but I'm saying, coming to meet Jesus, yo, technology job is going to be taken over by kids who got good parents and who was raised by some kind of moral compass to go get these good jobs. The rest of y'all going to be fucking bums. It's going to be it's going to be a gap. Middle, middle class is... Months. It's gone. It's already gone. Yeah, go ahead. It's going to be soon. It's going to be wealthy and poor. That's, That's it. <laughs> That's now. <laughs> That's now. Yes. Like I'm, I'm in the middle class, but it's like, yo, I, <laughs> man, I don't know where I'm, I'm trying at, but... to tell you that you're not. Middle class is already gone. I'm just, so, I'm doing great for myself. Listen. All right. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me explain. Let, we, can, we can close this after this. Go. This is the last day. Close. Middle class is gone. Is because you have to make six figures, a high six figures, meaning like you and your wife would be have to make six figures in order to be considered middle class. You're not poor per se, so that I think people get that. So I'm saying that the the guidelines for middle class moved. That's why they say middle class is gone because middle class used to be maybe fifty to sixty thousand, you know, like a hundred thousand between you both. You used to be able to afford that. But now, remember the houses that went for, even my house, all right, might have went for 150 got sold for whatever it got sold for, but it wasn't 150 So, like, yeah. the prices of everything changes. That's why middle class is already gone. And I could explain that better, but that's yeah. the, the gist of it. I'm just, listen, if you're young and you're at the age of 22 and 21, Yo, man, start getting your shit together. Put that fucking don't phone down. Be a man, damn it. Be a man. Start seeing the world for what it is, man. Start seeing it for what it is. Carve something out. Don't be the over thug guy. They got places for y'all. They sit y'all ass down. 
it's okay to learn good skills and traits, how to fix your car, fix your house. Learn from somebody. Talk to an older guy. Let him pass some knowledge down to you. Older men don't older men don't hate on you when they pass knowledge. They pass knowledge because they want to see you do good. You get what I'm saying? And don't also, as you get old, don't let social media and the media tell you how to run your household. Run your household how you see fit. Get what I'm saying? Run your household how you see fit. Don't let a phone run it. Because in another 30 years, shit's going to get rough for you. And it's going to be hard for the people who don't heed the shit that we're telling you right now, who just blowing it off. It's going to be hard for them. And I feel for them because they're going to go through it. You know what I'm right. saying? Also, worry about your health because they're, yeah. killing, they're killing you with your, they're killing you with the food too. But that's for another for another episode. All right, man. We out of here. Enjoy y'all. You know, glad y'all tuned in uh, for another episode of Pain Native Podcast. We appreciate y'all. We out of here. Peace. I don't care. <laughs>